Create a table with multiple columns. In the previous video, we created a customer table that had a single column. Now, most of the tables that you create in your database will have more than one column. So how do we do that? Let's create the customer table again with a few more columns. First, we need to delete the customer table that we created. To do so, one way is to expand the databases and table section until you see this dbo.customer entry. Right click on it and down the bottom select the delete option. This window here will open just for you to confirm what you want to delete. Click OK and the table is deleted. Now let's create our customer table with a few more columns. Once again, we start with create table and then the word customer. We then open the brackets. Now we're still going to have our first name column, so you can enter that. We're still going to give it a size of 100 and a data type of varchar, which as you remember, is variable character. Now, to add a second column to this table, you enter a comma and then go to a new line. This will let you enter in another column. We're going to enter in a column called last name. This will also have a length of 100 and is a varchar data type. Finally, we'll enter one more column. For each customer, they can have a value called order credit, which is the credit that can be applied to an order that they have. We'll call this column order credit and it will be a number data type. There are a few different types of numbers in SQL Server, but the most common and the easiest one to use is called int, which is short for integer. Enter the word int close the brackets and enter a semicolon. We now have our create table statement here. We have the first name, last name and order credit columns. Click execute and the command should be completed successfully. You can refresh your list here and you should see the dbo.customer table. One thing you may have noticed is the names of the columns. They're made up of more than one word, but these words are separated by an underscore. Why is that? It's recommended to have single word names for your columns and not include spaces. SQL doesn't actually accept spaces for column names unless you surround them in quotes. But if you surround them in quotes, it makes it hard to work with and inconsistent for yourself and other developers. The most common way to enter in column names is to use underscores to separate any words that you might want to enter. In this example, instead of having first name inside quotes with a space, we've just entered in first underscore name. You could have it as first name with no underscore at all, but the underscore makes it easier because it breaks up the word and lets you understand better what the column refers to. The same can be said for last name and order credit. This will be more evident as we work further with tables and then start viewing and inserting data into the table. So that's how we can create a table with multiple columns. Soon we'll look into adding data into this table and then viewing that data.